folks, I'm Tom Basso. Jason Levine. Today we're taking a look at Hospital Connect. This is the story of early coal mining. This is from Capstone Games. And I believe you said something like this is the first in a trilogy of coal mining games? Yeah. Okay, well, I, I didn't know coal mining needed that many games. But this is definitely a game about coal mining. It's for two to four players. You are going to be uh, digging up coal and getting rid of water. Let me show you. Now we're not going to go over every detailed rule in this game, I just want to give you a feel of how the game works. Each player is going to start with a board, and on this board they're going to be putting a coal on every spot on the board. And your goal is to mine as much of this coal as possible. And in fact, there's a lot of different ways to get points in this game, but if you clear out some of these areas here of coal, you're going to get bonus points at the end of the game. To clear out the coal, you're going to need to be putting wood down in here. And as soon as you get wood, you can place the wood in different areas and you have to build it in order. So that way you can mine more of the coal. And when you're done mining the coal up here in the top, then this section will close down and then you can start going down into the coal tunnel. You're going to have to be careful because water is going to show up over the course of the game. And if there's too much water, you're not going to be able to mine at all until you clear out some of that water. And at the end of the game, excess water can also give you negative points. Each player is going to have some workers and they're going to be using these workers. You get a farmer and an assistant and then a coal miner. And you're going to be using these workers as the game goes by. And this is going to be done through over in this section here. But before we do that, let me show you that the game is going to be going around this board here. And there's three years and in each year you're going to move this piece around. It's going to rain twice and water will fall into the coal mine. And at the end of the turn you'll be able to sell coal for points. You'll, be able, you'll have to feed your people a little bit or some money, and you can store some things. But mostly what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking worker discs and then using them. You'll be doing that in three different seasons, in spring, summer, and fall. In summer, your farmer gets an extra food. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. When you do that, players in turn order, and turn order is a big deal in this game, are going to be going over here, and there's a certain number of boards based on the number of players, and you're going to be taking, you're going to pick one of these spots and take all the discs of the same color from that spot. So I might take these three brown discs from that spot. If you take it from this spot or this one here, you will get extra water in your coal mine. When you take those, you're going to put them on your board. Now these discs are going to be used for you to activate your workers, but these discs also will determine who goes first in the next round. Uh, each disc has a value, yellow is three, brown is two, black is one. Whoever has the highest value will be going last. Then everyone's going to be take two spots of discs. The next time I go through I can take two more discs because I can only have a maximum of five discs. So then I have three browns and two blacks and I can put them on different workers. If you put resources on a worker, you can take the, uh, things that match the color of those resources. So for example here, I can use these three brown discs for him to take three wood. I can use two black discs for him to mine two coal. This guy here can take one yellow disc, or you can even put a food there, or a coin, and he will remove water twice and or dig for coal. Uh, so you're going to be using these for different things. You can also, your farmer, uh, has the ability to use discs and he can use two different colors to build a building. Now at the beginning of the game you're going to set this up and there's a setup in the rule book that always happens but you can also randomly, I have them set up randomly now, and players are going to as time goes by build these buildings. Each building has a cost on it. So for example this building costs a brown disc and one other disc. When you build that building, you're going to put a token on it, and it's going to give you some sort of benefit. This one gives you a coin. Sometimes they give you a building that you can then stick in your area, which will give you a benefit. This one here lets you store an extra coal each round and gives you a victory point every time you do so. And as you go up, the abilities get better and better. Some of them will even give points at the end of the game for different symbols that you have in different buildings. And the first person to build a building in each row is going to get points. So if you're the first person to build a building in the farthest row, you'll get four points. And the second person gets three points, etc. for each of these uh, buildings. When you build a building, your buildings have to be adjacent to each other. So if my first building is here, 
then I have to go, maybe I could go here next and then over here. You can build where someone else has built, but then you have to pay them a resource that it shows in the row where you're trying to basically build a building where they are. All these buildings are what makes the game. They're all different. Like this one here gives you three food, I mean three wood and get rid of a water, or you can take a coin. This one gives you three coins. This in the winter, coal is worth one point each rather than what you normally pay for coal. Here, uh, when it rains, you don't have water fall into your mind. This stops that from happening. And so you're kind of trying to figure these out. At the end of the game, uh, you're going to be taking points that you've gotten from these, points that you've gotten during the game. You'll have some coal left over, and you also get some bonus points, again, for different areas that you've cleared out here. There's some other rules to the game, but that's mostly how it plays. Okay, first of all, the theming of this game is about digging coal up, and I think it does a pretty good job for the most part, where you're digging the coal and the, whatever that little, the stitch or whatever in the top, and then you go down and dig the coal in the mine. Yeah. That's pretty neat. That that It seems to work. I like the fact that you need to put the little, the beams up to keep yes. the tunnel from collapsing. That I, Yes, it really... To me, it really gives a feel of that you're coal mining. I mean, you're starting out, you're finding some coal. Well, it's not that miserable. You're finding coal, you know, in the ground a little bit, and then you're like, oh, well, we found enough coal that we got to make a shaft to go all the way down to then get more coal. But if we have a shaft, we need to really make a uh, mine, and we need to put out wood to make sure nothing collapses. And it really feels like you're doing that and trying to get down there and make the mine deeper to get the best coal. Yeah, except, okay... I think the whole action disc thing, that's a clever mechanism for the game, but that makes no thematic sense. They don't even try. No, but you don't They're need like, to. They're like, here's a reserve pool, and then there's, take some action discs, and if this guy has four brown action discs, he can take four wood, or he can build a building. It's okay. It just It's very odd thematically for me. It is odd thematically, but I think that it works because it's got the whole, you know, it works well with the three different commodities and you're trying to get the right commodities to do the right things. I think that makes a big difference in the game. Now there is some replayability because you're going to be able to change those buildings and on the back all the different weird configurations that you have and how those buildings are placed really is going to be the main... There's two random elements of the game, how the discs come out of the bag and then where those buildings start each game and that's really going to kind of focus on how you're going to play probably because yes. those buildings are pretty cool. Very critical. What buildings you take and how you use the buildings are very powerful. But I think turn order is also critical in this game. As yeah, it's much kind of buildings. weird because turn order, I mean, food is definitely a great thing to get. Food is useful for getting food because you need to feed your people. Again. Uh, but food also activates some of the other workers, which is also useful. Um, and, and it's really actually, and then some of the better buildings need food too. Mm -hmm. But if you take the food you're probably going last next turn. And that's a big deal yes. sometimes. Yes, and if you take from certain, if you take from certain, I guess we'll call them wells. I don't even know what to call them, the, the, the action spaces. I feel like they're wells and you're getting stuff out of wells or something. Sure, but if you, you keep thinking that. If you do that, if you go to certain ones, you get rain. So it's like, do I take the one with the rain? Do I want to take something that gives me less point so I go early the next turn and early during the turn itself there's so many things to think about when you're choosing what you pick yeah I would when I first uh, went over the game I was really under the impression that the game was fairly linear you get the co-op you get the co-op you get the co-op you get the co-op but because of the buildings I don't think it is I think there's a lot of different options to go for you you don't even have to get all the coal out to win the game I mean that certainly is not doesn't hurt but if you concentrate on the buildings and Maybe get a lot of coins or something. Those are other ways where you can get a lot of points if you're watching what you're doing. And I feel like the game has some good replayability, which I did not expect upon going over the rules. Um, where do you end up on this one? Oh, by the way, I should mention I don't like the artwork that much. <laughs> the cover itself, bleh. But the game itself looks okay when it's laid out on the table. And yeah. it does need how the farms fit together. I like, I like the art layout. I'm not a big fan of the people themselves. But yeah, I think the backgrounds they're cartoony. And that stuff. They're a little cartoony, but I don't think that matters because this isn't the game you're buying for the artwork. This is the game you're buying for the gameplay, and the mechanics and the gameplay are great in this one. So you you really like this game? Yes, I really do like it. I, I don't dislike the game. I, I think it's fine. I, I would uh, for me, it gets an awesomeness rating of six, um, where I enjoy it. I think that there's a lot of things that can be done with it. But if I never played it again, I wouldn't be that upset either. I, grabbing a disc, I don't know, it's hard to explain. I, it, it was an enjoyable experience. I just feel like I 
met my quota now of this game. Um, the coal mining aspect is an interesting one, but I, for some reason it didn't grab me that deeply. I, the, taking the action and stuff, it's not, it's not overly long. It's good. It meets all the requirements of being good. It just doesn't go up to that great scale. So a six for me. See, to me, I like it a lot more than you. I give it an awesomeness rating of eight. Ooh. It has great mechanics. The action, the picking the actions and which kind of actions you pick. Are you going to get five actions? You know, because you only can pick two different types. Or are you going to get five? Or are you not going to get five? Because if I pick three of these, I'm going to go later in the turn. But if I only pick two, I'm going to risk the chance of maybe getting three later or else getting stuck with less dis. And also how you build out on, on the part where you're taking the hexes. It's just, it's a great game all around. And it's one that I highly recommend. All right. Well, that's <laughs> Hospital Connect. I think. Well, well anyway. anyway. Hospital Connect. I looked it up. It's, I couldn't find the word on the internet. Anyway, I'm on Tom Vassell. Jason Levine. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices cool stuff in stock. Check them out at coolstuffinc.com.